No, it's about one half past one. I'm in bed with my girlfriend. She's fast asleep. My little girl's next door fast asleep. So I'm drifting in and out of consciousness and I smell something plasticky. So I jump up because I'm worried about the devices we've got, the Kindles, the iPads, stuff like that. So I've gone and checked everything. Everything's okay, but I can still smell this smell. I've gone into the kitchen. I've opened the window. I lit up a cigarette. As I was smoking the fag, I can hear shouting. So I'm wondering what's going on. And I hear a lady going, it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger. So I think there's something seriously wrong here. So I've gone to the front door. I've looked through this pie hole and I can see the smoke everywhere. I've opened the door. There's all neighbours running out. Get down. There's a fireman's there, get down the stairs, he's shouting. So I've gone inside, I've put my dressing gown, and I've grabbed the little girl, put her under my dressing gown, got my girlfriend, and ran down the stairs. Now, our advice was always being told, if there's ever a fire, stay in your flat. So that's when our flames penetrate the door. If we had stayed in that flat, we would have been perished. And it just spread like wildfire, because it was covered in clad in the block of flats. The smoke alarm was useless. You know, I mean, it wouldn't have woke up nothing. You know, the smoke alarm was that like, and I could only hear it in the hallway, not in your flat. It was horrendous. People up at the window screaming, and the, and the thing went up in. It felt like seconds. It was just it was just going up and up and up and up. I'd never seen nothing like it. It was like something kind of a Hollywood disaster movie. You know of other people who got out? So yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I've just seen my neighbour in the centre there. He got out luckily enough. Also, see a lady that was up on the 22nd floor. She's got six kids. She left with them all when she got to the bottom. There was two kids in the car behind them. There was kids screaming up at windows, smashing the windows, explosions going off. It was, I'm, I'm shaking still. I can't believe it. I'm in shock. I'm just grateful that I got us out of there. But if we had listened to them and stayed in that house, we would have perished. Do you know how many people live in the block of flats? Well, there's 24 or 25 floors and there's six flats on each floor. So, you know, there's got to be a couple of hundred people. Some flats are one bedroom, some two, three, four, you know. There's a wide, wide range of, of um, rooms in the, in the flats. And we hear that there was some kind of gas testing taking place. Yeah, yeah, but about six weeks ago, there was a, there was a local resident that, that owned a tenancy, and he kept saying to us, look, they're going to come around and try and change everything to gas. Refuse to do it. They're going to ask you to sign it. And I go, it's all right. I still use electricity anyway, so they're not going to put my gas pipes through here. But I did see them working on the stairwell on the gas pipes, but not on our flat. But, but I did see over the weeks it going on the work. And then during the fire, there was all explosions going off, windows firing out, and it was all blue, blue flames, which struck me gas, you know. Were you able to help any other people get out? Well, no, I was just concentrating on the little girl and my girlfriend. Once we was out, we were checking, people was okay. I was just in my boxer shorts, no shoes on, nothing. There was a lady outside, a few hundred yards up the road, with a refuse bag, with trousers, shoes for people to put on, because everyone's running out in their, in their 90s and whatnot, you know. And um, it was just horrendous. I'm just open to God that not too many people have perished.